The jet stream is kicking into high gear in the next few days for some parts of the country, and this is going to mean particularly the chance for heavy rainfall and even some severe weather in the central parts of the U.S. This video has a truthful update on what you can actually expect out of this storm, plus a look at general temperature and precipitation trends further down the line. One nation weather. There has been a lot of hype going around about the train of storm systems and active weather that's going to make its way into the central plains in the next few days. I want to break it down for you here without the extra hype, telling you the most likely scenarios and also just what could happen if a storm goes a little bit more haywire than what is expected. Here we go, starting out as we go into our Sunday, November 3rd of 2024 into the morning hours. Right after our time change tonight, our Saturday night going into our Sunday, we're going to be here looking at this model 7, 8, 9, 10 a.m. in the morning Sunday. The first low of our major two low pressure systems moving through the the U.S. in the next few days. You can see it. They're located into the eastern parts of Colorado. As a result of its counterclockwise flow, we're going to have a lot of rainfall and already an increasing flood threat building through parts of the southern and central parts of the plains. Even as far north as the upper Midwest, there will be some chance of some rainfall as we go through our Sunday here. Notice that rainfall continues in the northern and upper Midwest regions here. And then we're also going to have on the southern side of this first low a chance for some severe weather as we go through our Sunday afternoon and evening. You can see north central Texas into parts of Oklahoma as well as Arkansas. We're going to have some pretty heavy rainfall and the associated chance for severe thunderstorms with gusty winds, hail, and maybe even an isolated tornado or two. The best chance for that Sunday will be in Texas and parts of central Oklahoma. Keep in mind that as we get these rounds of rain moving through the plains as well, heading out of our Saturday night here as I'm filming this video through our Sunday, our Monday, even into our early Tuesday, that is going to increase the flood threat round by round through the central plains regions. Notice we've got rain really anywhere from the Great Lakes back down to the south central plains between our first low and then the second one forming back down to the south. This is as we go through our Monday afternoon and into the evening. That second low is going to make its way on up towards Missouri by the time we get to the middle of our evening Monday, and we could certainly have along it a pretty potent little front here and the associated severe thunderstorms that could bring all hazards, damaging winds, hail, and tornadoes through central and eastern parts of Oklahoma, central and eastern portions of Texas, even into western Arkansas parts of Kansas and Missouri. This could be the biggest severe weather day, honestly, as we go through our Monday evening. Then by the time we get into our Tuesday, that second low, this is going to be the last one, at least in terms of our near-term train of activity moving through the plains. This low makes its way on up towards Wisconsin and Michigan by Tuesday afternoon. A weak front with maybe at the highest end some stronger storms and some gusty winds through parts of the Midwest back down to the Mid-South. Overall, the chance for flooding, the chance for severe weather going down with this front by the time we go towards our Tuesday and Wednesday. And overall, you can't even see the low attached to this into our Wednesday afternoon. That being said, the models have actually turned it up from my last video in terms of at least there being some decent rainfall moving into the Ohio Valley, Mid-South and Southeast out of this lingering front by Wednesday. This is really just going to be some very beneficial rainfall unless this continues to uptrend because overall flood chances look pretty low and this is an area that has been seeing significant drought since the departure of Hurricane Helene a month, in fact over a month ago now at this point in a lot of this region. So it is good news to see some rain coming there, but where we don't really need too much rain is going to be back here in the plains. We've also got a drought here, but we don't need more than two to four inches of rain, and we're already going to have that in a lot of spots like Texas, Oklahoma, as far north as the upper Midwest, just with our first low through the Sunday evening time frame. So imagine once we get the second low beginning to get those totals going Monday into our Tuesday, look at what the finalized totals are going to be by the time we go through our Tuesday evening over a lot of this region. A big swath of yellows, oranges, and reds slathering places like Texas, Oklahoma, Oklahoma, Arkansas, through the rest of the Central Plains, mid-Mississippi Valley, and as far north there as the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. We could really see the potential for some isolated flooding in any of these areas, but the best chance for scattered to numerous reports of more, possibly even significant flooding, that's going to be down here towards Kansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, Western Arkansas, and then down into Northern Texas. Even if severe weather doesn't materialize here, widespread four to eight inches of rainfall, and maybe even a few locally higher totals trying to push 10 inches, that will be enough for some pretty significant localized flash flooding. Then notice from there, as the storm moves east, the cause for concern really decreases towards the Ohio Valley, Mid-Atlantic, and Southeast regions of the U.S. as we see less in the way of rain totals in that direction. Before I discuss the severe weather potential out of these storms, just a quick reminder to you that you can check out the awesome weather model maps that I use throughout my videos from Weatherbell. There's a free trial link to them right down there below in the description. Also, if you're new to the channel and you have been enjoying this video so far and want more consistent, accurate, and truthful educational content in the future, make sure you're hitting that subscribe button down below right here on YouTube. I'm currently at 5,550 subscribers, well on my way to 6 
6,000 and beyond here as I love growing and interacting with you. Also, as always, just leave any comments, questions, and concerns you have down below this video. Here we go, though. Let's talk about the severe weather setup and really just this pattern setup as a whole by looking at the jet stream up there 15 to 20,000 feet into the atmosphere. As we go towards our Sunday, November 3rd into the afternoon and evening hours, our first round of severe weather I'm talking about in this video will occur here. And it's mainly going to be in Texas and Oklahoma as we've got those yellows and oranges. You can kind of see them pushing on through with this trough or digging the jet stream really being the feistiest over these zones. Interacting with some lower level winds moving more south to north, we could even see some rotation in some of the storms we get moving over these same areas Sunday and into our Sunday night. So be on the lookout for not only wind and hail, but also tornadoes into particularly Texas and Oklahoma then. Then as we go towards our Monday this is really that kicker of a front that's going to form into our Monday evening, lining up just like this from Iowa back down to western Texas and right out ahead of this line. That's where we're going to have that best chance for severe weather, including all hazards. It's probably going to be in the form of a line segment of storms, but we could have some of those embedded circulations, especially out ahead of it. So from Missouri and eastern Kansas all the way back down here to central and eastern parts of Texas, that's where that best chance for severe weather is going to be. Again, that is Monday and Monday night. Then by the time we go towards our Tuesday, notice this energy still looks feisty. In fact, some of the strongest it's been at 85 to 95 knots of that mid-level wind here into the Midwest and Great Lakes. The thing is, this front is going to be weakening down despite the jet stream strengthening up. So we're probably not going to have much of a chance of severe weather into the Midwest on Tuesday as this front pushes east. But here we go, taking a look at the actual severe risk levels using my level 1 to 7 severe risk zone graphics. This is as we go into our Sunday and Sunday night. Notice the area, particularly in the dark green and yellow, that's what I want you to focus on. Isolated to scattered severe weather coverage likely there. And again, that's particularly going to be coming out of west central Texas into north central parts of the Texas region through the Red River Valley and into central Oklahoma. Wind, hail, even some tornadoes will be possible, but it really is going to depend on how much rain we see early in the day with all these rounds of flooding also pushing across the region. The more rain we see early on, the lower the chance of severe weather will be with the daytime heating later on in the day. And the same will go as we go into this. This is our setup for our Monday severe weather, the risk zones graphic here. Pushing from Texas all the way up to Missouri, just like I laid out for you with the jet stream a minute ago, you can see that threat here. Even as far north as Illinois, at least the isolated chance, I think even for tornadoes with the jet stream kicking up, these storms will come Monday afternoon and into the evening hours. And I think it is time right now that we time these storms out using the good old NAM model. I normally don't like this model, especially because it goes a little bullish on some things, but I think it does a great job of timing out the way things could go through the next 48 to 60 hours. First of all, starting off with our Sunday morning. Sunday's round, remember, it's going to be in parts of Texas and Oklahoma, and in the morning, we could already have some existing flooding, some isolated severe weather ongoing in some of these areas, and while that doesn't seem like it's going to, you know, affect what could go on later in the day, the more rain we see in the morning, the better chance that we're going to have less severe weather as we go into the afternoon. Nevertheless, this model indicates we could already have some storms with particularly a damaging wind and hail threat already firing up. This is just midday Sunday, the NAM model Firing up from San Angelo and Abilene there in Texas to western and central parts of Oklahoma, our first round of severe storms. Keyword, first round. We could have multiple pushing from mid-morning through the end of the afternoon and even into the nighttime Sunday night here. This is as we go 2, 3, 4 in the afternoon. Really don't focus on where these storms are. Just note that we could have some intense storms in some of those areas that I highlighted earlier in the risk zones graphic. And then notice even as we go overnight Sunday night and into our Monday morning, we could see more storms firing back on up here west central parts of Oklahoma, and in a place like Wichita Falls, Texas. This actually converts into that cold frontal line that we'll have Monday with that severe weather threat from eastern Texas up to Missouri. And look at this line. This definitely looks pretty potent to me. It has that potential for those QLCS or quasi-linear convective system tornadoes. That's when you've got a line of storms with embedded circulations. The threat will probably pick up some point midday through mid-afternoon heading from places like Wichita, and then down to Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, and then down to Dallas, Texas, and then heading east from there. And again, this could include all hazards into our Monday evening. We'll also have the potential for an additional cluster or a connected cluster, depending on you know which model you look at, as far north here as Missouri and into Iowa. Remember, we'll also be watching flooding, and then all of this will push east with at least some isolated hazards pushing into parts of the rest of Arkansas, Missouri, and Illinois, say, into our Tuesday early morning. Now taking a look at the temperature overview that we've been seeing and will continue to see through the next few days. This is what we're looking at today as I filmed this on our Saturday. A little warmer than average over a lot of the country, but this pattern of contrast between the west and the east really builds up more by the time we go into our Sunday and our Monday. Here's Monday's temperature 
temperature anomalies around 15 to 20 degrees above normal for a lot of the mid and upper Mississippi Valley into the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley as well, right out ahead of that front that's going to be advancing through the plains. Notice what's behind it, though. We've got 10 to 15 degree below average conditions back there towards places like Idaho and then even down as far south as Utah. There's not much of a change all of the upcoming week in the troughing that's going to be ongoing out west. So Nevada, Utah, Wyoming, Colorado, you name it, we're going to be 10, 15 degrees below average out here most of this week temperature-wise. Meanwhile, in the east, we're going to see those warmer anomalies being pushed towards the east coast as that weak front still continues in that direction, 10 to 20 degrees above average there. As we go towards the middle of this week, that was Wednesday I was just showing you. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the day-by-day -day high temperatures through the next four days. I showed the low temperatures as well in my last video, but even though those are going to be kind of on the record-breaking side in terms of how warm they'll be each morning, I really want to focus on the highs because these high temperatures are what really support those main severe weather threats day by day. Starting off with our Sunday, November 3rd of 2024, you can see we're going to have pretty considerable warmth building out here through the Central Plains. Warmth is all a relative term. 60s and some 70s don't feel too crazy warm, but with the moisture that's going to be building out especially, it is definitely going to feel kind of moist and muggy out there to say the least. We're going to have 70s pushing on up into places like Canada. Kansas, southern Missouri, even all over here towards the Ohio Valley. And keep in mind with that severe weather threat in Texas and Oklahoma Sunday and Sunday night, we will have at least some daytime 70s to support that threat, although it may not get quite that high if we see more of the morning time rainfall. So again, it really all depends on what happens earlier in the day. A lot of times, no matter what time of year it is with these severe weather threats. Here we go into the Monday afternoon time frame. You can see the cold front there in the plains. We've got 50s behind it in places like South Dakota and Nebraska, but out ahead of it, a lot of 60s, 70s in the Midwest, Great Lakes, and even some 80s the further back you go down there towards the Mid-South. Those 80s in Northeast Texas and into far Southeastern Oklahoma, they will be on that very appetizing side for severe weather. So, you know, truthfully, I think we will have some fairly significant severe storms. Nothing to panic about, but certainly be ready for those back down here towards the Mid-South and even up into places like Missouri Monday. Here we go towards our Tuesday, the front continuing its advance east, and so now 50s pushing into places like Kansas, Iowa, and Wisconsin. Meanwhile, east of the front, these boxes indicate record warm highs. These temperatures are, you know, 20 plus degrees above normal for this time of the year in some cases in places like Ohio back down towards even Jackson, Mississippi, where we're going to have either upper 70s or low 80s across a lot of this region. And then Wednesday afternoon, more of those record highs. They're closer to the mid-Atlantic and northeast coast, though, places like New York City, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in the mid to upper 70s. Those will be records. Lots of 70s and 80s through the southeastern quadrant of the U.S. Or we're back in the 50s up here and even some 40s in the north central plains. One last thing I want to cover before the end of this video is the mid-level pattern up there, 15 to 20,000 feet in the atmosphere. As we go towards the end of this week, blues on this map indicate those troughs and the associated storms that are going to build out right in front of them. Meanwhile, oranges and reds indicate those ridges where we see those warmer than average conditions pushing up and forcing the jet stream further north. As we go to the end of this upcoming week, we're probably going to see another similar setup just a few days after we take a break. We're now getting back into the action by Thursday heading into Friday. We could see some severe weather and a lot of rainfall, maybe even some flooding potentials moving back on out here into the plains. Snow back into the Rockies with the cooler air. It's just a stuck pattern, really, of these storms just pushing through the Rockies and then moving east. Look at this one. The center of this low and that trough in the jet stream probably moving towards the upper Midwest. According to this model anyway, don't trust it this far out. But according to this model, by Sunday, November 10th into the afternoon, it's in the upper Midwest and Great Lakes. The associated front back down through the Mississippi Valley with warm air to work with right out ahead of it. That one could even make a run for the East Coast as a stronger system. And then look at what this model has. I know it's 10 days out, but it has yet another eastern ridge and yet another western trough that could do the exact same thing heading towards the early part of the following week. So that is Tuesday, November 12th we were looking at there. Trust me, I'll keep you updated here in a truthful hype-free manner on the channel. I don't like to, you know, make things crazy and seem more extravagant than they are. So hopefully this video didn't panic you in any way. And if you have any questions, if you're concerned about anything, make sure you're dropping those comments right down below in the comments section of this video. Hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications so you don't miss anything, including a possible live stream I might try to do on Sunday. I'll see you in the next video or stream either way. Though.